Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we have with us today Meredith Holch, Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Belmont Media Center, and Lauren Fender, Coordinator of Reference and Public Services at the Belmont Public Library. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So welcome, Meredith and Lauren. And I understand that you'll be talking with us today about crowdsourced poetry and an attempt to create Belmont's first crowdsourced poem. Uh, so my, my first question is, you know, before we get into the how and the why, what is crowdsourced poetry? And, and Meredith or, or, or Lauren, either one of you, please. Crowdsourcing is a really interesting concept, not just in poetry, but in um, different forms of art. There is a crowdsourced film that is made every year with the community TV stations across Massachusetts and also Vermont. And I believe New Hampshire, where every station takes a scene from a film. Okay. And then one person edits them all together. That's the idea behind crowdsourcing is you get a whole lot of different styles going on, and then it's all put into one. Okay. And that's the same behind a crowdsourced poem. And so it's pretty easy to do a crowdsourced poem because what you need is from people in your community or your organization, whoever is the crowd that's being sourced, um, to write in a, a few lines on a certain topic. Sometimes there's a more specific structure. Ours is very free form. And then there's usually a well-known poet who uh, is volunteering to be on the scene to construct it into a poem that hangs together and is, um, yeah, that holds together. So, so let's let's talk about how we're doing this in Belmont with with this particular process. I um, had the idea because this is April. April is Poetry Month, National Poetry Month, which it has been for about the last twenty five years. Lauren might want to talk about that later on, and. Um, so on NPR, I heard this really great crowdsourced poem that was put together by the NPR poet, um, whose name is Kwame Alexander. And the one that I heard for April was really great. Um, I, I think I might read you some of the lines. It's called, Today I Am a Witness to Change. And it is specifically addressing anti-Asian hate. Okay because that has been in the news recently. So I took my inspiration first from that. Okay. And then I frequently go to Vermont where I recently moved to Belmont from. And my little town of East Hardwick has a community organization and they were doing a crowdsourced poem. And uh, they had a, a call out for entries. So I said to myself, if our little town of 3000 people can do one, then I'm sure I could wrangle one out of Belmont and it's a great community engagement project and it's just fun. And, you know, every poet has a different voice and every community has a different voice. So we're just publicizing and I decided it, it, to ask Lauren at the library and Gail at Belmont Books to partner on this because it, it's a, we only are putting the call up for two weeks and we want to get as many entries as possible and anybody of any age can enter and but, I'll tell more about the specifics later. Okay, so well, so I did, I did want to, I did want to ask um, next, you know, how, how, how is it that Belmont residents can participate? What, what do they need to do? Okay, so all they need to do is write one to four lines on the subject loom and they send it to me at my email which is meredith at belmontmedia.org and it's as simple as that okay and so meredith this is bloom as in flowers bloom right um, just to make sure that people understand the word <laughs> the word is b-l-o-o-m it's okay. as in Flowers bloom, ideas bloom, people okay. bloom, the whole cycle of life, decay leads to bloom, bloom falls to decay, anything that it brings to mind for the person. Why, 
why the word bloom? Why, why, um, you know, what's important about that? I was thinking what would be a good topic that would be um, kind of open-ended and have maybe metaphoric and comparative and philosophical and natural and aesthetic potential. So many different angles people could write from. And I came up with maybe about eight different themes. And I'll read you a few of them. Um, flight, dream, found, seeds, falling. Uh, I came up with a bunch and then I ran them by Lauren and she and I narrowed them down to, I think it was three. And then um, she sent it out to the staff that happened to be on hand at that moment. Mm -hmm. And what did you call it? A, um, a staff, uh, oh, I can't remember, but it was a, a funny term. Um, and they narrowed it down to bloom. And then it was right after that that I was emailing with Stephanie. And so I asked her of these three, is there one that speaks to you particularly? And she also chose Bloom. So that's how it, that happened. Now, let me ask you about Stephanie Burt. She's a Belmont resident and a professor of English at Harvard, and she's going to assemble the various entries into, into the crowdsourced poem. What can you tell us about Stephanie? And is this something that she's done before? So I'm not sure if uh, Stephanie has done this before, but I do think that she's got the just the right credentials for for doing it. Um, it was, you know, and Belmont is is so fortunate to have such a, a really wonderful wealth of authors and, and local poets, and um, Stephanie is definitely one of them. So, uh, as a sort of a background, you know, she has a bunch of books of poetry put together, and then in 2019 also released one about. Um, how to read poetry and engage with poetry um, as a as a person, you know, a regular person, mm -hmm. and I think that's um, that's an important component to always keep in mind. And to my mind, it would be really instrumental in not only um, creating your own poetry, but then also helping to form something from other people's words. You know, it's that academic sort of concept of of seeing a a student or a, um, a resident, you know, and being able to pull something together that really speaks to the community. Um, and in 2012, the New York Times called uh, Stephanie one of the most influential poetry critics of her generation. So I think that's very telling about, um, and, and honestly, I was just absolutely delighted uh, that, that she was willing to be able to do this and was able to do this because I think that really speaks to um, the, the, the interest and in the community engagement part, which is really the big part of it. You know, it's got a a pretty like it's one to four lines you know it's not a huge level of um you don't have to build a whole poem yourself but you can really participate in a community um engagement way that'll be really meaningful i think when we see a final product and especially when you know stephanie is able to sort of build it together and make it what it's supposed to be her credentials really speak for them themselves i think so. well, that that sounds great lauren and 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 you know let me ask you again i think i think i think um um, Meredith said that both adults and children can participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't see any reason why not to. I mean, the beauty, the beautiful part about Bloom as a theme, right, is as Meredith mentioned, it's got so many angles. Um, a child might want to be able to participate and enter in one line with a parent, one's focused on a flower, and then the parent can sort of frame it in a larger concept of of the life cycle that we see you know as the weather turns nicer um, and we see more things really bloom so i think there's there's it's such a um it's such a great avenue because the threshold for participation is low and um just need people to be involved and participate and i think that'll build whatever it is it'll build something that's reflective of the community and there's nothing better than that Lauren, let me ask you about, about the role of the library and, and why, why this is a project that's important to the library. So, I mean, first it was just really great to be able to work with, with the Belmont Media Center over the course of uh, One Book, One Belmont uh, over the last two months or Better Through Books. So that's um, building on a, a great partnership over the course of the last two months. And I feel like part of that was Meredith and I getting to know each other a little bit better. Um, so part of me is uh, as a community oriented 
person and also somebody who works as you know, part of the community at the library and in public service is to think about ways to connect people. And um, the beautiful part about it is that it brings something that's also very central to libraries, which is the written word. Um, so being able to build something to, with the community, right, or have the community build something, be able to participate in, in um, encouraging that on something that is inherently literary um, in its, in its scope, at least in terms of being able to write something together collaboratively, I think just sort of hit all of the boxes in terms of what's important, both for community building and for, um, you know, fostering that's, you know, sort of interaction, especially right now when it can be a little bit hard to interact uh, in person in the same ways that we might be used to. Uh, and then the fact that it's got a literary bent, which is solidly library material there, it just hit all the right things. So, so um, tell me how many submissions that you've already received, and if it's possible, um, could you could you perhaps read one submission submission so that so that people have a sense of you know what what does this entail? How you know how much do I have to know about poetry in order in order to participate, if anything? Sure, I can find you a line. Okay. So here I will read you four lines. So far, yes, you asked the question, we have three entries, which is a really good start, which means, okay. and each one was four lines. So we already have 12 lines, which is a really good start. The deadline, by the way, is next Friday. So you have the entire weekend and the entire week to um, put, just get your inspiration on, you know, go outside, look at some blooms and um, write some lines. So here is one's, here's one. Um, branches spread in bud, leaves grow and blossoms unfurl, then limbs break in springtime storm, but I don't fall. So that's an example of one. And um, the three are very different and I'll be really interested to see how Stephanie puts them together. One of the people who sent me their entry also said um, she doesn't envy Stephanie. And I wrote her <laughs> back. I, I think Stephanie actually might be looking forward to it. When I emailed her and asked her, she wrote back within about 30 seconds, one word, yes. <laughs> so. Well, it, it sounds like an exciting project. And, and again, um, you know, people have um, until a week from tomorrow to, to submit uh, to, to submit there up to four lines. Um, is that is that right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All and right. they send it to Meredith at BelmontMedia.org. Okay. And, Anything... and I will immediately write back or as soon as I see your email and you'll know if, if it was received. Okay. And um, uh, Meredith and Lauren, um, anything else at, at, at all that you want to add? I just think this is going to be a really, it's a great idea that Meredith came up with. Um, it's a great way to honor the 25th anniversary of Poetry Month. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's happened, especially as, as the years have gone by, um, that people sort of forget about poetry as a, as a, I mean, we don't at the library, but um, there's a lot of places where poetry gets forgotten about. Poetry Month speaks to making poetry part of everybody's life. There's poetry in every moment that you have. Um, and it's, I think, a great way to be able to honor the spirit of that while we're at the sort of tail end and being able to really wrap up Poetry Month um, on its 25th anniversary with a bang. So I, I, I don't think there's a better way to do it. Well, thank you. And so I, I also just want to add, it, it is a community project and I look at it as a way, sometimes there are rifts within a community, uh, certainly there's sometimes turmoil with our, in our own Belmont. And it's a great way for different people to get their perspectives all onto the same page. It, it's just a really nice way to bind people and to include people. So I especially am putting out the call to people who may not feel always accepted or um, included in the town of Belmont who reside right here. And I know that there are people out there. So please, everybody, um, please send us your lines. Let me let me ask one more question. And that's, um, you know, once Stephanie uh, constructs the, the crowdsourced poem, um, 
uh, you know, how, how can the community then access the poem? My hope is that Stephanie will agree to read it right on our TV station, since we are a, a video, visual, moving visuals. Um, it would be great to have her read it. If she isn't available to read it, then I'm thinking Lauren and I will probably read it and alternate lines. Um, I did consider having all the writers come in, but I, I think it'll be nicer or um, more appropriate if just one or, or two people reads it. It'll stand more as a poem, I think. So thank you again, Meredith and Lauren, for bringing this project to Belmont. It's an exciting project, Belmont's first ever crowdsourced poem, and I hope our viewers will participate. Thanks for watching. This has been the Belmont Journal News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and we'll see you next time.